Hey everyone, my name is Chris from Create Daily, and today I'm going to show you how to create this popular 3D article animation from scratch using Adobe After Effects. What I love about this effect is that you can recreate it with a screenshot or digitally scanned item. If you want to know where to find historical assets, I'll link another tutorial of mine that shows you where I find newspaper articles. In this video, I will show you how to animate a 2D object in 3D space along with adding assets to bring it to life. I will have several tips along the way, and if you'd like me to elaborate further on something, drop a comment. All right, so we're in After Effects here, and the first thing we're going to do is bring in our newspaper article. So I have this New York Times article that I have here, and I'm going to scale this down just so it fits. Now what we're going to do is right click and we're going to pre-compose, leave all attributes in here and we'll label this article animation working. Now what we're going to start off with first is the actual article animation itself, and then we will add the assets in. Okay, so to get started here, I'm going to jump into my working folder. And I just want to show you guys a quick trick of the tray that's really going to help with um, when it comes to working on projects with animated archival images, especially a newspaper, something with text and stuff. So when I zoom in here and I scale up our image, you see how much blurrier it's getting? Well, that's because this is an old digitally scanned asset. But in order to combat that and preserve some of the quality, what we're going to do is click this icon here, which is to help continually rasterize this layer. So this is a huge step. I'm only emphasizing this because if you don't do this, it's not going to look as good. So make sure you select this in within your working comp. So now that we got that out of the way, we're going to make this a 3D layer. And now we're going to start our animation in one second and we will animate the position and then X and Y rotation. So I'm going to start here and then I'm going to go to about three seconds in and I'm going to zoom in here. And then I'm gonna go to negative 15, let's just say negative 30. Keep zooming in. Now what I'm gonna do is add a proportional grid. And what this is helping me do is really just help line up where I want this animation to be framed within my shot. If you're unfamiliar with the rule of thirds, it's a really popular photography, cinematography, and design principle. If you don't know it, learn it. And if you don't know how to get this exact rule of thirds, grid up, I'll show you real quick. You just go to edit, preferences, grids and guides. And then here you see I have my lime green color that I like to use. And then you just change your proportional grid to three and three for the horizontal and vertical. And this is what you get. All right, back to the animation. So I'm zoomed in here. We have our first set of keyframes. So this is what we have so far. Now what I want to do is go up about three seconds and I want to bring this down. And I'm gonna change our values. Instead of negative 15, we're just gonna to go to 15. And then instead of negative 30, we're just gonna to go to 30. We're gonna keep it easy for us. We'll go here. All right. Then we're gonna go up three more seconds. And we're gonna go focus on this guy. And we're gonna do the same thing again. So we're going to go from negative 30 or 30 to negative 30. Then we're going to go from 15 to negative 15. And we are going to zoom in pretty tight. All right, now we are going to highlight our beginning keyframes and we're going to go, let's say another three seconds and we're going to paste these here. And this is what we have. I guess the animation is there, but it still looks pretty boring. So how do we fix that? Well, let me show you. Um, in order to do that, I'm gonna use my Flow plugin. Um, it is a paid plugin, but if you don't have Flow, what you can do is highlight all of these keyframes and click F9 or right click keyframe assistant easy ease. I have Flow, so I'm gonna use it. So I'm gonna just click apply here. And this is looking a lot better compared to how it did before. In fact, we could probably even speed some of these keyframes up just a bit. Yeah, that looks good. Now what we need to do is add our highlighter effect along with all of our other assets to bring this animation to life a little bit more. I'm gonna go to one second and 12 frames in. I'm gonna double click on our pre-comp. I'm going to pull out our pen tool and I'm going to draw 
a line. Now, if I'm concerned that my line might not be straight or it might not be in line with the actual article, keep in mind these are digital scans, so they're not gonna be a perfectly straight line every time. I have actually these lines in this article that I can go by. So I can click here, bring this up a little bit. This is looking better. Cool. And we will label this highlighter. All right, I'm gonna to go to add, add trim paths, and then I'm gonna bring this down to zero. I'm gonna click there. I'm gonna go up six keyframes. Actually, we'll do 10 keyframes. Then we will add uh, a keyframe for our start animation. Then we're gonna go in. And then we'll start removing the highlighter around three seconds and six frames. So I'm going to bring this up to 100 and then I'm gonna bring this up another 10 frames on the start. So it's gonna go in, then out, just like that. And we'll see how this looks. So it's gonna go in, then out. Perfect, wow, that timing was like on point. <laughs> um, now what I need to do is actually be able to see our words. So I'm gonna change our blending mode from normal to multiply. So this is how this looks here. And this is looking good so far. So we zoom in, it's highlighted. Now we're going to the next part. And what we want to do from here is we actually want to create those little footprints that go across this photo to our next set of uh, highlighted text. So um, I found some free assets online that I'm going to use. So I have our assets here and we have our dotted lines and I'm going to bring these in. Basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to bring the viewer's eyes from one part to the other. And these dotted lines I think are a perfect way to do that. All right, this is looking good, um, but I need to change up the timing a little bit because I want them to start coming in right about right after three seconds. So we'll start here and it goes there. Awesome. Now, um, what we need to do from here, I don't really like the way this white looks, so I'm going to just change this to a red. So I'm going to add a fill, um, maybe do like a bit of a darker, darker red. And we will change the blending mode to multiply. So now it goes here, this dotted line brings us there. And then right here is where we're not no longer gonna see that dotted line anymore. So rather than trying to, to hide that layer, what I'm gonna do is actually go to where that cuts off at. I'm just gonna click all out bracket. I'm just showing you my thought process here. So this animates in and then followed by those lines. All right, now what we need to do is do what we did before with the actual highlighter animation. And it's pretty cool because we see it come in right here. And then as soon as we're animating out to our next part, it's actually animating out as well. So now what we're going to do is go to our last guy right here. And this is where we have that circle go around him. And we're going to use another free asset that I found online for that. So I'm going to just go down to this guy. And we get to him right at eight seconds. I want to start it like kind of like right around the 622 mark. And then we have our circle. I'm going to bring this up. And what I want to do is bring this down right around this guy. Now we're going to be using a blending mode, so I'm okay if it's the circle's on them a little bit just because we're gonna be able to see them anyways. I'm gonna take the same fill, apply it to the circle, and then I'm going to change the blending mode. And then it's gonna go like this. So since we're ending with this, we could, one, we could leave it there if this is like what we wanna highlight out of this article, but say we wanted to remove it, we wanted to make it a perfect loop, I'll show you how to do that. So we're gonna go here, and then right at about the, let's say 9, 10 mark, I'm gonna split this clip, so I'm gonna click Control Shift D. I'm gonna duplicate this clip. I'm gonna right click, time, time reverse layer, and then I'm gonna bring it up. So all I'm doing is basically duplicating the clip but reversing the time. So it's gonna animate on, and then it eventually animates off the way it came on. Now what we need to do is add our sauce, and we have a lot of it. So here's what we're gonna do for that. 
what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to bring in a texture because right now, all we have is uh, black space. So I'm gonna bring in this paper texture here and this is just gonna fill up the space a little bit and um, it's gonna keep it so it stands out a little bit more. The next thing I'm gonna do is add a flicker. I'm gonna go to new uh, adjustment layer. I'm gonna label this flicker. I'm going to add a curves effect to this. I'm gonna bring this up. And right now it's making everything brighter, but just stand with me for one second. You'll see what this does. I'm gonna click on the opacity, click Alt, wiggle, 50 comma 10. So now there's like an actual flicker going on and it just makes it look a little bit more old school, like kind of what you would see in a film grain. All right, now the next thing we're gonna add is a three camera. So we're gonna go to new, new camera, bring in our camera settings here, we'll click okay. We're going to go to two view so we could see what our camera is looking at. And what we're gonna do is go to camera options and enable depth of field. So that's super important because just like a regular camera, you want things in focus and things out of focus. And um, with that, we have our uh, focus distance, which is why we pulled up the second view here to see where that focus distance is gonna start. So we'll set a keyframe right here to start here. So it starts here. Then we're gonna go down. And I'm just gonna go with our actual animation of our article. So this way it'll help keep me in line with where exactly these keyframes need to be. And so this time I need to move our focus distance a little bit. Maybe there's a certain word that's highlighted. We'll see like police parade, annual police parade. And we're gonna go to this guy here. Move this around. Oops. There we go. This is a really shallow depth of field. Nice. Oh, that, that looks crispy. And then we're gonna go to the start here. And we will paste that. We'll apply flow to these. And we'll go back to one view just so we see what we have. So the other thing I really like about this is that because we start our focus distance a little bit uh, sooner, um, the animation of it, as we zoom into our article here, there's actually a little bit of a focus breathe. Um, and if you're familiar with shooting, sometimes when you zoom in to things really fast, your camera needs a second when it's an autofocus to catch up, which is what's called focus breathing. So that's what this is doing here when we start our uh, keyframes like this. And it has right here, you see it's out of focus and then in back in focus. And then here, and then here again. It looks smooth. So this is how you create a 3D article animation. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Thanks for watching and stay creative.